Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I just wanted to make this video just telling you guys six pet peeves of mine that other people do with their piercings, okay? We'll call it six piercing pet peeves, okay? And this is just shit I've noticed over the years, I've seen here on YouTube, online, that kind of stuff, that is wrong and it bothers me to no end, okay? Okay, let's just get into it. Right, I do have notes um, that I will be looking at because I tend to ramble, lose my thought, all that kind of stuff. So I have notes. Alright, the first one is when people go to a shop and or piercer that they know nothing about. Please research the shop and or piercer that you are wanting to go to because you may find that they have a bunch of negative reviews um, or not they're not really qualified or something like that. And that may, you know, persuade you to go to somewhere else where they actually know what the fuck they're doing. Um, also, price. Please do not let the price of a piercing determine where you're going. Um, I get that $10 piercing sound very, you know, good. Like, that's, I get that. But, um, please don't let the price determine where you want to go. If you want to go to a good, reputable shop, um, or a good piercer or whatever, and they are a little more pricey. I apologize for my hair. I don't know what it's doing. Um, and they're a little bit more pricey and you want that piercing that much, please just save your money and go to that, you know, reputable shop and or piercer because <laughs> I don't want to get too into it, but, you know, price just shouldn't really determine where you're wanting to go. Um, like I said, I get $10 piercing, sound good, but please use your brain and understand that that just ultimately is not really a good thing. Um, alright, so I'm just going to move right along because like I said, I don't want to get too into that. Um, alright, <laughs> the second one is when people say that they gauged their ears or that they have gauges in. Um, this really like irritates me to no end. And guys, gauge is a term of measurement, okay? Therefore, you are not gauging your ears. You are not putting gauges in, okay? Because that's a term of measurement. What you are doing is you are stretching your ears, okay? Or, if we're talking about the drawer that you are putting in, I'm kind of rusty on the terms because, like, I've been out of the whole ear stretching thing for a while. Um, but I believe it's plugs and, like, eyelets that you can put in. Um, those can be made from, like, a variety of things. Please do not wear tapers as jewelry. That is not good um, to do at all. You do not need to do that. I think there's a few other... Um, terms for other jewelry that you can put in your stretched ears. I, like I said, I've been out of that game for a while, so I'm kind of resting on those terms. Um, if you do good research, you can find, um, the names of everything I'm talking about. But anyway, do not say you gauge your ears, do not say you've gauges in. You've stretched your ears, okay? Okay. I hope we all understand that we're stretching our ears and we're not gauging. Alright, my third one is when people change their jewelry too soon. And I think, um, for the majority, I think the reason why people do that is because they want to put cuter jewelry in. So my advice to you is just get pierced with jewelry that you think gets cute. Um, my shop that I go to, they allow you to bring um, your own jewelry in. Obviously, they just like sanitize it and everything like that before they pierce you with it. Um, and that, you know, cuts down the price. Um, just another tip for you guys. Um, that will cut down the price. So if you want, you know, cute jewelry, you can bring it in. Um, just like... If you're getting like your navel pierced, for instance, please do not try to get pierced with anything dangly. Any good piercer will not pierce you with anything dangly um, for reasons, um, you know, such as your, you know, it's a new piercing, it doesn't need anything dangling, getting caught, that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, you can get pierced with cute stuff. Um, my shop that I go to, yeah, they let you bring jewelry in, but they have a like wide variety of jewelry that you can get pierced with. And it's all fucking cute. Yes, they do have the option of getting pierced with like plain jewelry, like something like I have in my lip right now, just like a plain ball, you know, nothing fancy. And that is cheaper too, um, just to opt for the plain um, jewelry, but just get pierced with something you like because you're just going to cause the piercing to get irritated and potentially infected. Um, and most of the time it's six months to a year that you have to wait before you can change your jewelry. Um, most often the piercing looks like it's healed, it's not causing any problems, it doesn't hurt, sore, anything like that. You can change it at that six month mark, um, but you know, 
Um, depending on the piercing, you might have to go into your piercer to do that. Um, like if I wanted to change this one at the six month mark, I would have to go into my piercer to do that because it's a captive bead ring, for instance. Um, but yeah, so please don't change your jewelry too soon because you're just opening up, you know, your piercing to potentially reject, migrate, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, also there's other exceptions to changing your piercing too soon. If you went to, um, a piercer who didn't use proper jewelry, um, you know, that goes with your body, your anatomy, or just the piercing itself, um, that kind of stuff, or if you're allergic to the metal, for instance, if you guys notice, I never wear anything gold in my piercings, that's because I'm allergic to gold, so all mine has to be silver, so if you're allergic <laughs> to the metal, then you, well, if you know that you're allergic to the metal, don't get pierced with it, obviously, but if not, just, you can go and have it changed early, um, or, you know, if your body is just not working with, like, the jewelry itself, for instance, when I got my nipples pierced, I had to go back and have them, um, one of them be changed out because the bar wasn't long enough. So, that kind of stuff, that's okay, but, you know, go to your piercer to have that taken care of. Alright, my fourth one would have to be self-piercing. And I just, please go to a professional piercer to get pierced. Um, I understand that you can buy, you know, cheap needles offline now, I get that, but really you just want to go to a professional in a very clean and sanitary environment uh, to, you know, pierce. That's just, just please go to a professional piercer. I cannot stress that enough. You can, you know, cause infections and stuff like that um, by piercing yourself, so just always go to a professional um, for piercing. Alright, my fifth one is when people say that they got like their angel bites or snake bites pierced and that bothers me because most piercings are named after like the body part. Um, for instance, I got my cheeks pierced, I got my nose pierced, I got my conch, which I've actually heard that the correct term is conch, but that kind of sounds weird to me so I'm just going to say conch or like I got my tragus pierced, but nowhere do I have angel bites or snake bites, okay, um, and those are like newer terms, um, like m the Madonna or the Monroe, which are like these right here, um, I think the Madonna is on this side and the Monroe is on that side, I could be mixed up, but anyway, those have just been around for a very long time, like years and years and years, so that's why those are more acceptable, but, you know, um, it's just one of those things, I think if you want to go into a piercing, um, shop or talk to a person you want to sound educated and not stupid you just need to say okay well I would like two lower lip piercings or two upper lip piercings that's just my opinion it really annoys me though when people do say like oh I have angel bites or snake bites no um all right my last one is when people use peroxide bacteria neosporin alcohol that kind of stuff on their piercings and you don't need to do that because what all that shit does is it kills all the good bacteria that you need to help heal your piercing. And you don't want that because that just leaves room for bad bacteria to grow and ultimately, you know, kill your piercing and not let it heal and eventually it can lead to migration and rejection. So stay away from all that stuff. What you want to do is you want to use a saline solution or, you know, any sort of cleaning um, solution that your piercer gave you or recommended you to get. Um, also with like nail spore and like ointments like that, putting those on a piercing that just causes the piercing to um, not get any oxygen, which needs the oxygen to help heal and all of that. My ball just dropped off my lip. All right, well I guess that's a good thing that that was my last one. All right, so I have to find that little ball and I will see you guys in my next video. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you in my next video.